Hello, this is Marshall Abrahams. The warmest of welcomes to all subscribers, new and existing, and also to anybody who has fallen over this video in the dark and can't be bothered to find something else to watch. I am a writer, see the description, and a fan and supporter of true British history, and I'm also an archaeographer. This is my own word. It means someone who digs up history by disinterring the original meanings and connections of words. I'm in very good company. If you look below, you'll see uh, links to related channels about British history. This is The Four Royal Roads of Britain, number 18, and I'll start with a famous description of these ancient highways by Robert of Gloucester, slightly tidied into more modern English. Fair ways many have there been in England, but four most of all I understand. From the south into the north takes Ermine Street, from the east into the west goes Icknield Street, from south-east to north-west, that's something great. From Dover into Chester goes Watling Street. The fourth is most of all that runs from Totnes, from the one of Cornwall anon to Caithness, from the south to north-east into England's end, Foss, men call this name. There is enormous amount of information on the lesser highways as well in the excellent Project Gutenberg's Old English Chronicles by J. A. Giles but as it would take a whole book to sift it, I have relied on Robert of Gloucester and my own researches for this video. These were undertaken during two unspeakable winters about 12, 13 years ago, one after the other, when I hunkered down with an elderly gazetteer amid sub-zero temperatures and feet of driven snow and made it my business to find, uh, to trace the extents of these roads. We'll start as Robert did with Ermine Street, on which we've already touched in a couple of previous videos. And for an important slant on the name of this road, I'm indebted to Matthew, who emailed me with some very useful information about a village called Arming Hall in Norfolk, Albine Territory. This from Wiki, which has its uses. In 1929, a prehistoric timber circle and Henge Monument site were discovered a mile and a half a mile and a half northwest of Arming Hall by Gilbert Vince Insel, VC, who had been taking air photographs of the area in search of new archaeological sites. Uh, while this uh, prehistoric timber circle and henge don't necessarily prove anything, it does tend to support the significance of the name of Armenia to Albine Taramdangi, descended as she was from Noah Sisuda particularly since Arming Hall is close to Caister St Edmund, which was the capital of the Iceni tribe, and only about six miles from a village called Shochem. I'm sure I've mispronounced that. Shochem might or might not be another Shuda name, and Shuda, of course, was the deity of Bashime, the Mesopotamian province, whose king, Taram Dungi Albine, had married. There is also a very long road running almost due south from here to the River Gipping, just beyond Coddenham, which runs through a village called Long Stratton. And as we'll see, these um, names, Stratton Street, Stratton, are a giveaway. A couple of my videos show where Ermin or Armin Street meets the City of London at Bishopsgate, and how it runs on down to London Stone and Old London Bridge, a fraction of which can still be seen and walked on at the bottom of Fish Street Hill at St Magnus. Um, Armin, by the way, is a, a brewer's preferred spelling and possibly pronunciation of Ermin, um, for reasons which I went into um, in Evidence for Albine. Um, looking in the other direction, Ermin Armin Street is supposed to run on from Lincoln to York, but I'm happy to ignore what later writers have said, since most of it is a lot of Roman nonsense. Um, Lincoln is actually where Ermin or Armin Street meets the Fossway, and the Fossway runs from Totnes to Caithness, exactly as Robert of Gloucester said it did. It is still traceable along most of the route, and we will retrace our steps along this astonishing road, much of which is still in use today. If my theory is correct, Albine Taram Dungi brought her motif of the Watchers back to Britain with her. This was a motif ubiquitous in the ancient world. Robert Sepper does some very good videos, including depictions of the blue-eyed gods. And we need to know what this word, Watcher, or I, is in Sumerian. I used John A. Halloran's Sumerian lexicon, and I found that I is Iggy, I-G-I. There are Ick words all over East Anglia and elsewhere, from the Ickneald Way onwards, including Ickborough, Ickworth House, Ixworth, 
Icklingham, Icon, Plain I, Ickleford and Ickwell Green, while other related names include Seema, Black and Black Notley and White Notley and Silver End, all of which are close together. This silver, anything called silver is related to this um, uh, Logrian black and white, uh, black and silver moon colour theme. Uh, then there's Ockold, and Ock, of course, means I, Homersfield, Summersham, and, of course, the Caisters, which Matthew contacted me about. This name, Caister, was taken from Britain to Asia Minor and appears there, near Sardis, as the famous River Caister. I believe that the Iceni, or Iconi, were also named for this word, Iggy, this Sumerian word. At the very top of Ermin Armin Street, properly the Fossway, overlooking the hum Humber at Alkborough, is a place of quite astonishing importance to the British story, and that is a Troy town called Julian's Bower. This is so important that I'm going to step off the Fossway to have a quick look. A corruption of Ilian's Bower, Ilian being the other name for Troy, it is a tiny and very ancient maze overlooking the confluence of the Trent and the Ouse, where they join the estuary called the Humber. Just south of Julian's Ilian's Bower, not far away, is a large rectangular structure with little beyond banks showing above ground, called Countess Close. Written off as medieval, I was alerted to its possibilities by an entry in Brewers for a romance called Purse Forest. A prose romance, says Brewer, printed at Paris in 1528, and said to have been discovered in a cabinet hid in the massive wall of an ancient tower on the banks of the Humber named Bertimer, from a king of that name who built it. The manuscript was said to be in Greek, Coilbren in other words, and was translated through the Latin into French. Purse Forest is available in English, translated by, I think it's Nigel Bryant, in a great many volumes, but I wonder whether this isn't another example of a British history being taken out of the country in advance of the approaching comet and published in France. I am, of course, thinking of the Brute or Chronicle of England itself, as discussed in Evidence for Albine. The significance of this is that I think Bertimer is Vertimer, the O-R pronounced as U-R, as in word or wort, and Vertimer fought the Saxons in the 5th century in several tremendous battles, one of them on the river Derwent, or Darwent, uh, used to be pronounced Dant. This is not the Dant in the northwest of England. This is another river called Dant, which debouches into the Ouse at a place called Long Drax, another I word, just above the Humber, another Cymru word. As Troy towns seem to go with castles or mighty fortresses, so Julian's or Ilian's Bower might well be the Troy town to Bertimer's or Vertimer's Tower. The Fossway begins again on the other bank of the Humber, leading one to suppose the existence of a ford, just as we will see at Deptford and Lambeth, and one can well imagine Bertimer, stroke Vertimer, mustering his men at this fort or tower, and crossing the Humber to give battle to the Saxons. The Ichneald Way, meanwhile, crosses Watling Street, and here I part company with the Welsh-British derivation of the name Watling for all sorts of reasons which I go into in Ye Gods and Little Fishes. Briefly to summarise, Wat or Wattle, W-A-T-L, is Wattle, W-A-T-T-L-E, a word for a twig or a hurdle such as fences are made of, and huts, their walls of wattle proofed against the weather with daub or mud. These mud huts, much derided as primitive, were our first protection, and we were taught to build them by Oannes, the Lord of Water himself, who came ashore from the Persian Gulf and stayed at Suma, teaching humanity how to look after itself. The cot in Rome, also called the Casa Romuli, which Romulus is said to have constructed, lasted for a thousand years, while the House of the Apostles in Sandwich, in Kent, uh, well, in the Isle of Thanet properly, uh, where Paul the Apostle and many others lodged also lasted for a thousand years. These mud huts continued to be built in honour of Oannes, and if anyone should think this far-fetched and doubt the sanctity of these rude mud huts, remember that wattle in Welsh stroke British is banger, and banger also means monastery. 
Richard Hinckley Allen mentions that the Milky Way was also known as Watling Street, but unfortunately ascribes an Anglo-Saxon origin to this name. I should add that if, that if anyone doubts the antiquity of these roads, or that the British were capable of cambering and paving them, camber is another obvious Cymru word related to chamber, and indeed chum, um, a chamberman, that's what Skeet says, um, a, a stretch of paved road dating to at least a hundred years before the Romans came here was found in a quarry in Telford, and even more exciting, on a stretch of the Fossway near Catterick in Yorkshire was found remains of a hostelry estimated at 10,000 years old. Yes, I know modern dating is exceedingly suspect, but at the moment it's all we have. Even if the results are only half true, it's still an amazing find. Watling Street begins at Dover and is traceable all the way to the old Dover Road. Here it stops, or rather, thanks to the wonderful work done on this by John Chapel, uh, another Britain's Hidden History, by the way, but a website this time, we now know that it doesn't stop. John Chapel traces it in a straight line through Greenwich, where a Humber Road and a Maze Hill help to give the game away, and up to De Deptford Creek where he has identified and even seen a ford across the Thames. It continues all the way to Lambeth, to where Stonegate Stairs used to be, for the convenience of Lambeth Palace, and where evidence of another ford has been found across the Thames at Westminster, or rather to Westminster. Watling Street then does a dog leg across Green Park to join the Edgware Road, and here it becomes um, the A5. Finding all the tentacles of Watling Street that fan out beyond Gailey, due east of Telford, is a life's work. But just to mention one arm, or one or two arms, so to speak, one arm turns northwest at Gailey past a house called Stretton, another giveaway, and can be traced all the way to Chester, again, just as Robert of Gloucester said. Another arm goes to Roxeter, once the capital city. Since this was on the old Cymric Logrian border, I wonder whether this capital city of Roxeter could have been shared between the two British nations. Possibly even more important, and certainly less well known, is the place where Watling Street crosses the Fossway at Wibtoft. This is the apex, the capstone of Logries, what Wilson and Blackett called the Tiny Fifth, and is still called High Cross to this day. And coming down Watling Street from the northwest, you can still turn right at High Cross onto the Fossway, just as our ancestors have been doing for thousands of years. Quite a thought. Atherston, in Warwickshire, is on Watling Street, and here Arthur I and many other British kings, princes and nobles are buried. And finally, the Fossway itself. On the left or east bank of the Dart, a prehistoric trackway was discovered at the top of the tidal reach where Totnes was built, I'm very sorry to say that I cannot find the reference for this. However, it is possible to trace the Fossway from Totnes to Exeter and beyond. A great deal survives in the form of roads, tracks and field boundaries, which can some sometimes be extremely ancient. It is also possible to gauge something of the extent of the comet's damage in um, AD 562, where the Fossway disappears altogether. There are also three rivers called Avon in the southwest of England alone, which indicates a large influx to foreigners to a damaged and deserted part of the country. One can picture the following exchange between, between them and the few native British left. What is this river called? asked the Saxons in Saxon. The British, not thinking much of fellows who don't know a river when they see one, reply politely in British and probably rather loudly to get the meaning across, it's a river. Thus did three rivers in the southwest alone fall victim to linguistical misunderstanding and lost their true names. The Penk, which runs nearby Gailey, is another. The village of Penkridge is not named for the ridge on the Penk, although there is a ridge here at Congreve, but it is properly Pen Crick, or head of the heap, tump, barrow or stack. The Saxons softened the G of Crick, giving them Pencritch, which be became further cor corrupted by misspelling to Pencridge, what the true name of the Little River Penk is therefore also lost. In 2015, a stretch of old road on the line of the Fossway was found at Ipplepen in Devon. This has, of course, been identified as Roman.
The root of the fosse, where not evident at first sight, can be uh, identified by the number of Strettons, Strattons or street names, as are other British roads, and probably some Roman stretches too. The Foss Way is ultimately traceable almost all the way, but under different names, to Bishop Auckland in County Durham, and thence less easily traceable via Deer Street to Corbridge on the so-called Hadrian's Wall. After that it becomes known as the Devil's Causeway, running straight into berwick upon tweed I think that this northeast coast of Britain, including Aberdeenshire, actually, must have bought the, borne the brunt of the comet strike, because although it is likely that the Foss Way follows the A1 to Edinburgh, or rather the other way round, we don't pick up the trail again easily until it passes through a coastal village called Joppa, and then out due east, from Leith to Linlithgow and Camelon near Stirling. Here it curves to the north, and then to the east, round Stirling, and we know now that we're on the on the right track, quite literally, because on an old map of this road at Yetz of Muckett is a little hamlet called Fossaway. You can imagine how thrilled I was to find that. At Perth, the crowning place of Scotland's kings, the road passes such giveaway names as Arthurston, Jordanston, Meagle, where one of Arthur's Guinevere's is buried, Ark Hill, and Padden Aram. This is where the Albine Abrahamic Hugadan uh, migration is supposed to have rested. Uh, not this one, but the other one in the Middle East. There is no reason to suppose that the modern road takes any other course than that followed by the Fossway all the way to Aberdeen. But at Aberdeen, the old road turns um, to the northwest, running to the left past the hill called Benahi and onto Inverness via Elgin past Succoth, yes, really, and another hill called Enoch. I have myself driven part of the way along this old road, now no more than a track into the mountains, and serving one or two houses. On the other side of the Black Isle we're into Sutherland, and many of the Albine-related names in this part are in evidence for Albine. Finally, at Latheron, the Fossway turns inland to Thurso. Force, F-O-R-S-E, names abound up here, the spelling reflecting the British pronunciation of the letter O as or, which still survives in Orf and Gorn, um, as well as in Ryder Cock Horse to Banbury Cross. Um, my guess is that uh, Thurso is the Thursos, which was the stalk of fennel with a pine cone on top, that's the pineal gland, and was carried at the head of religious processions, much as a crucifer carries a cross or a cross in Christian ceremonies today. This signified uh, the spinal cord up which the Kundalini travels to the crown, and also, obviously, who has control over that force. The foss or forceway is therefore literally force, and etymologically also force, and force it, the American word for a tap. It means, as I think, the twin pillar called strength, which is spirit and water. Uh, in the Lake District, um, which used to be part of Wales, Cymru, there are several waterfalls that prove this connection between water and force. Era Force, Stanley Force and Burka Force are three. And there is another um, which beautifully uh, links up the Dungi um, connection as well, called Dungeon Force. Talking of crowns, I don't believe in coincidence, so it is significant, I think, that the late Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, chose to buy a ruined castle just to the east of Thurso at May. Whether she knew of the importance of this place is debatable, but the urge that guides us all has a way of making his presence felt, and I think that's what he did when Queen Elizabeth bought this castle and restored it. Well, there we are. That's um, a highly personal um, look at the four royal roads of Britain. Um, as these are highways and arteries of Britain, I do go into them in more detail in the Great Migrations. But um, there, there we are. Thank you for watching and um, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.